In this video, we're going to continue our study of basic Mendelian genetics by talking about what we call a dihybrid cross. We'll start by going back a little bit to the basics and talk about the guy who started it all. Gregor Mendel, who, if you will remember, was a monk, and he worked with pea plants to do uh, genetic experiments. So we'll start by looking at exactly how he performed uh, these experiments that he did. He used pea plants as his organism of choice to study heredity. And as you can see in this diagram, he took the reproductive parts of a flower. So the, the two primary reproductive parts of the flower are the anthers, which you can see right here with the little yellow tip, and they produce the pollen. And the pollen is actually, you can think of as being like the male part of the flower, kind of like sperm in animals. And then what we call the carpal or the pistil, which is outlined right here. And that's kind of like the female part of the, the flower. That produces the egg. And so um, the pollen produces the sperm, and the carpal produces the egg, and the sperm and egg come together. And so in some plants, what he would actually do is he would remove, uh, as in this purple flower here, he would remove the stamens which have the anthers on them. He would remove the male part and that way he could make sure that this flower did not do what we call self-pollinization, meaning that um, pollen from the flower itself actually fertilized the eggs. He would then take pollen from a different flower and he would use it to cross-fertilize um, another flower. And that way he could make sure which flowers were actually pollinating and therefore fertilizing um, other flowers. After some time he would wait for the pea pods to develop and he would get the peas and plant them and see what type of offspring were produced from that cross. Here we see a list of traits that Gregor Mendel studied. For example, he studied the color of the flowers, he studied purple and white, he studied the position of the flower Axial, which just meant that the flower was located on the side of the plant, and terminal, which meant the flowers were located at the tip of the plant, or the top of the plant. He looked at the color of the seeds, so he noticed some of them had yellow seeds, some of them had green. He looked at the shape of the seeds, some of them were round and some were wrinkled. He looked at the shape of the pods, the pods are what actually contain the seeds, or the peas, so he's noticed that some of them were inflated, or what we call smooth, meaning they were uh, very large and they were smooth, they had no wrinkles, and some of them were constricted or wrinkled. He also looked at the color of the pods. He noticed that some pea plants produced green pods and some produced yellow pods. And he looked at the actual height of the plants, or the, the length of the stem. Some of them were tall and some of them were short, which he called dwarf. And he studied these in a mathematical way, and that's kind of what he did that had not been done before. He applied mathematics to the idea of heredity, and if you will recall, heredity is just the science of how we actually inherit traits from our parents. And as he studied the relationships of these different traits, he found that some of them were dominant and some of them were recessive. So as we've already discussed, a dominant trait will always outshow or outshine a recessive trait when we have a heterozygous form. In other words, when we have a dominant gene and a recessive, the dominant and the recessive, the dominant will always show up over the recessive. So now let's get into the gist of what we call a dihybrid cross. A dihybrid cross is involving two different traits at the same time. So when we say di, di means two. So this is going to be a Punnett square that uses two traits at once. So the two traits that we are going to use are flower color, and in this case Mendel noticed that there were two types of flower color. There were purple and there was white. So he noticed that some pea pods had purple flowers and some had white. And in doing his experiments he discovered that the purple flowers were dominant. So we will use a capital P to represent those, and he noticed that the white flowers were recessive. So the gene for white flowers is recessive, so we use a lowercase p to represent that. And if we did a monohybrid cross with this, 
we would have our Punnett square. And let's say we did a purple, uh, one that was homozygous for purple, so it has two purple alleles, and one that was homozygous recessive for white, so it had two white alleles. Because purple is dominant to white, we would have a ratio, a phenotypic ratio that was 100% purple. So that's one trait that we're going to look at. The second trait that we're going to look at is the actual color of the pea pods themselves. So Mendel noticed that some pea pods were green, and here you see the actual pea pods, and they're green. And he also noticed that some pea pods were yellow. So here's a pod that is yellow in color. And he noticed a relationship here. He noticed that green pods were dominant, so we would use a capital G to represent that. And therefore he noticed that yellow was recessive, so we would use a lowercase g to represent those. And if we were to do a Punnett square using this particular trait, say we did one that was heterozygous for green, so it had one green allele and one yellow allele, and then we did that by a plant that had yellow pods, so it was homozygous recessive, what we would wind up with is a phenotypic ratio where 50% were green and 50% of the offspring were yellow. And those are just monohybrid crosses like we have done before. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do a dihybrid cross where we take both of these traits, the flower color and the pod color, and we're going to actually look at them in the same cross. So this is how it's going to work. Let's say that we have a plant and it is heterozygous for flower color. So that means it has one allele for purple and it has one allele for white. And let's say it is also heterozygous for pod color. So that means it has one allele for green pods and it has one allele for yellow pods. So that's one parent. So this parent has purple flowers and it has green pods, even though it has the allele for yellow pods and it also has an allele for white flowers. Now let's say that that parent is going to be crossed with a parent that is recessive for both traits. So this other parent is going to have two white alleles for flower color and it's going to have two yellow alleles for pod color. So instead of just looking at one trait at a time, we're looking at two traits at the same time. Now we're going to need a larger Punnett square for this. Instead of just using four boxes, we have to use 16. So I'm going to draw my Punnett square just like this, but I'm going to have to draw it pretty large. And I'm going to draw three lines in the middle, and that's going to give me four sections going up and down. And I'm going to draw three lines going across, and that's going to give me a total of 16 boxes. Now we're going to leave this page for just a second because what we need to do is we need to see how we're actually going to have to distribute the different alleles. So one of the flowers we said was heterozygous for both traits so that means it has a allele for purple and it has an allele for white and it also has an allele for green pods and it has an allele for yellow pods. Now, we have to figure out what are the possible combinations of these two sets of alleles. In other words, in meiosis, when we're going to make gametes, if you'll recall, the gametes are simply the sperm and the egg, the reproductive cells. Um, different ones of these alleles are going to go into different gametes. So you may have, if you have two sperm, you may have uh, one allele goes into one sperm and the other allele goes into another. Um, and these can kind of mix and match, but we're going to have an allele of each trait go into each gamete, each reproductive cell. So let's see how that's actually going to happen. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pair them up together in a certain way. So the way I like to do this is I like to go by the system called 11, 12, 21, 22. And what we do is we assign each one of these alleles, we assign them a number. So we have the first P allele, and we have the second. 
and then we have the first G allele, and we have the second G allele. So across the top of our Punnett square, so here's our 16 square Punnett square. Across the top, I'm going to distribute these alleles across the top. So what I'm going to do is for 11, 11 is going to go above this box, 12 above this one, 21 and 22. So for 11, I'm going to take the first P and I'm going to pair it with the first G. So I'm going to, above this box, put the big P, the capital, and the capital G. Um, for the second, I've got to do 12. So what that means is I'm going to take the second P, or yeah, the second P, and I'm going to pair it with the actually got ahead of myself just a little bit there. Uh, 12, we're going to take the first P and we're going to pair it now with the second G. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take the first P and I'm going to pair it with the second G. Now, 21, what that means is that means I'm going to take the second P and pair it with the first G. So we have the 21 and then the 22 means I'm going to take, finally, the second P and pair it with the second G. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me all possible combinations. These are the four possible combinations that I can have of these alleles. So that's the way I'm going to actually distribute my alleles when I'm using a 16 square Punnett square. So if we come back to our original Punnett square, when we're finished, it's going to look something like this. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the boxes in just like I would in a regular monohybrid cross. I'm going to take the ones on top and I'm going to bring them down. And I'm going to take the ones on the side and bring them across. And when I'm finished, this is how it will look. So here's my finished Punnett square. And all I did was I filled in the boxes by bringing... Uh, the ones on top down and the ones on the side over to the right. And instead of saying our phenotypic ratios are things like there's so many that are purple or there's so many that are green or so many yellow, we're going to say, well, how many are purple and green? So a good example of that would be uh, this box right here. Uh, in fact, all of the ones in this column are going to represent ones that are purple and green. Now, if we look at uh, a different column, we have different things. So, for example, in this second column, all of the individual P's in that column are purple and yellow. And in the third column, if we look at that one, all of the ones in there are going to be white and green. And in this last column, we've got some double recessives. They're all white and yellow. So what we're doing here is we're simply looking at two traits at the same time and we're not asking ourselves how many are purple, how many are green, how many are white, how many um, are these individual traits. We're asking how many are two traits at the same time. So the way that's going to be different is going to be in the way we do our, our phenotypic ratios. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to count how many are each type. So it looks like if I want to know how many are purple, how many have purple flowers and have green pods, I'm going to count that there's one here, two, three, four, so that's going to be 4 out of 16, or I can reduce that down to 1 fourth. So 1 out of 4 offspring are going to be purple and green. If I want to know how many are, for example, how many are purple and yellow, I look here and I've got 1, 2, 3, there's 4 out of 16. So instead of doing our ratios out of 4, we're going to do them out of 16. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is there's actually an easier way to do this without doing a large 16 square Punnett square, and that's by doing two small squares. In other words, instead of doing one dihybrid cross like we just did, we're going to do two monohybrid crosses.
So let's do a different scenario. Let's say that we have two heterozygous organisms. We have an organism that is heterozygous for flower color and one that is also heterozygous for pod color. And we do that with a plant that is heterozygous for flower color and is, let's say, is recessive for the pod color. To do this without doing a 16 pair Punnett square, I need to just understand some, some basic rules of probability. If I were going to flip a typical U.S. quarter, um, everybody would know, uh, hopefully, that the odds of getting heads or the odds of getting tails is one half. In other words, there is a one half chance, a one in two chance of it landing on heads, and there is a one in two chance of it landing on tails. But if I wanted to know about the odds of, say, getting heads twice in a row, or getting tails twice in a row, or if I wanted to know what are the odds of getting heads the first time, flipping it again and getting uh, tails the second time, what I would have to do there is multiply the probability. So the odds of getting heads is one half, and the odds of getting heads again the second flip would be one half. And let's say I wanted to know what are the odds of getting heads the first time and heads the second time, I would multiply those ratios, and that would equal one-fourth. So in other words, the odds of me flipping a coin and getting heads twice in a row is not one-half, but it's actually one-fourth. So I take the probability of the first event, which is flipping the coin and getting heads, and that's one-half, and I multiply it by the probability of the second event, which is again flipping a coin and getting heads the second time, and that's how I get my ratio for both of those events occurring at the same time. We use the same principle when we're doing genetics. So instead of doing one large Punnett square with 16 squares, I'm going to do two monohybrid crosses. So here is one monohybrid cross, and then here is going to be another monohybrid cross, and I'm going to keep the traits separate. So I'm going to do flower color in one box, and I'm going to do pod color in another box. So, one parent is homozygous for flower color, so they have a purple allele and a white allele, and so is the other parent. So, I put one parent right up top, and I put the other parent on the side, and what I'm actually going to get here is something that looks like this. And then what I'm going to do is with the other trait, I'm going to do the same thing. One parent is heterozygous for pod color. The other parent is homozygous recessive, like so. Now let's say I want to know what are the odds of getting a flower or a pea plant that is both purple and has green pods. So again, this is a dihybrid cross situation. I want to know how many are purple and green. Well, all I do is I first look at my first trait, and I ask myself, well, what are the odds of getting purple? So I notice I have one, two, three out of four that are purple. And then I'm going to ask myself, well, what are the odds of getting green? And I notice that I have one, two out of four, which reduces to one half, that are green. So the odds of being purple are three quarters, and the odds of being green is one half. So just like in flipping the coin, all I do is multiply those ratios together, and what I get is three eighths. So what that means is that the probability of getting a pea plant, if I cross these two parents right here, the probability of getting a pea plant that is both purple and green is three-eighths. It's the odds of what it is to be purple multiplied by the odds or the chances of being green.